Hello and welcome to my new tutorial series where I hope to demystify some of the ECS things that have been happening in Unity. Uh, I've been realizing that people kind of want some simple samples of how to do certain things in ECS or the most updated code. Um, ECS tends to move very fast and so you could be looking at a tutorial a month ago that would be outdated with a bunch of APIs that are not in production anymore. Um, so I hopefully to keep this updated and try to keep continuing on that. All my code is in GitHub, so feel free to make a pull request, feel free to critique my code. Uh, I want this to kind of be a community. Um, so with that, the final result of what we'll build, <coughs> uh, at least for this tutorial, um, and then I'll elaborate on it. So basically, you have these three uh, squares that are generated by ECS. You notice they're not showing up over here. And we'll click on one of them and you can right click and move them around. Click on another. It will deselect this one and select this one. And you can move this and then finally the third. Um, so that <laughs> might seem kind of simple but my goal is to teach the basics and hopefully have some uh, concise examples that people can learn. So switching back to my brand new project, the first thing you want to do is install two packages, uh, the entities package and the mathematics package. So you're going to need to click <coughs> show preview packages and we'll go down and here's the entity package and then the mathematics. So I'm going to go ahead and install those. Great. So I have entities and mathematics installed. Uh, and also, this is on 2018.3, uh, so you don't have to change the manifest or how, the old way to do it. All you need is just those two libraries. So um, I'm not really actually going to go into what is a component, what is an entity, and what is a system. Um, I'll, I'll try to kind of cover really briefly, but um, I feel like there's already a lot of good information on the core systems and how they interact with Unity. Uh, my job is to kind of hopefully get some more concrete examples. So in an RTS, most important thing is the player input. So we're going to make a player input component. And we're going to open that up. And here is our normal template that uh, Unity generates for us. A lot of this is be largely useless for components. Um, so we don't want a class and we don't want it to be a mono behavior. Uh, components are just uh, data, essentially. So I component data, and if you don't see it, it's because you need the Unity uh, entities package. So you have a public struct of component, and when you're thinking about components, think about anything that a player input would need, uh, and if you were the system running on it, what you would need to actually process things. So for my game, all we need is a left click, public bool, right click, and the mouse position of wherever that thing happened. So this is all we actually need, and every component that cares about player input is going to know these three things. Um, so, <clears throat> oh, actually, sorry, this will be a float 3, um, which is another package we installed, the Unity Mathematics. And the reason why we use float3 instead of vector3, uh, it's on the Unity GitHub for ECS. Um, it's much more optimized and uh, than the vector3, vector and so that's why we use that. Um, <clears throat> one quick gotcha, you can't actually use bools. Um, they're not a blittable type. Uh, so a blittable type just basically means if there's conversion that needs to happen on the C sharp end between uh, manage and unmanaged man memory, um, float3, int, unsigned int, all those are uh, blittable types. Bool is actually not a blittable type. So we're going to make a new helper class. So we're going to go back to Unity and make a new component. And we'll call it blittable bool. And I actually got this code from the Unity forums. Um, <clears throat> some helpful person uh, created something for this. Um, Unity will have their own. They will make bool blittable eventually. They haven't yet. Um, but for now, this will be on, on the GitHub. Um, I'll also probably have it in the description. So don't worry about copying this down. And um, the Unity forums have a great example of how to use this. And all you can see is it's just using byte, which is oblitable. And, um, and basically, we have our bool, and we can use everything normal. So let's change this to 
blitable bool instead. Change this one, blitable bool. Great. Now we have our first component, and we can run the system to capture player input. So we're going to go into here again, create C sharp script, and player input system. So this is where we kind of get to the meat of the e ECS. Um, systems are basically the logic of your game. And um, we're, I'm going to try to do it in the highly optimized, uh, efficient, jobified way. So again, remove all the basic mono behavior. We don't need any of that. And let's import our entity package. And we're going to extend our class to job component system. So you might have already seen component systems, which basically you, you make a component group and create manager and then iterate on those systems. Job component system uh, does a lot of scaffolding for you and allows you to use uh, your systems in a jobified way. So let's create our struct and we'll just call it player input job. <clears throat> and it's going to extend from I job process uh, component data and we're going to take in a player input uh, oh I think I named it player input component but we should probably just name it player input there we go um, so here we go I job process component data so uh, I job process component data actually does it's just a nice wrapper around the chunk the chunk and iterated component groups um, let's see if I can get um, a slide going. Um, <clears throat> so here's this slide. Uh, this was taken from the Unite LA 2018. Uh, as you can see in the in the first one, I job process component data essentially just wraps component group and chunk iteration. So what this what they liked about it was I job process component data can be used when you want to uh, simply just fetch the components that you need to run the system on and then just iterate on them. Uh, but if you need a little bit more um, granular control, you can break into the component group and chunk iteration. So that's um, a little two cool things that they did for that. Um, for, for what we need, we're just going to use iJob process component data. Um, so you can see that it doesn't impl implement interface member execute for player input. So we're just going to implement interface. And we get a reference to the player input component on that entity. So we don't care about, this system doesn't care about anything else the player is doing or anything with a player input. All it cares about is adding some, um, changing the data on player input. So in our data, we have left click, we have, we're going to get data right click, and we're going to get data mouse position. And we're going to set all of these. Now we actually can't just do input dot, you know, get mouse button down or whatever. The reason being is input still runs on the main thread um, and you need engine.input and it will crash your Unity. So don't do it on this it, because if it's running on any other thread but the main, uh, it won't work. So what we need to do is pass the inputs into the main thread, or sorry, into this thread when the time is. And, and I'll show you that in a second. So just for now, we're gonna make some public um, uh, blitable bools, left click, public, blitable bool, right click, and then public float 3, and got to import Unity Mathematics, uh, mouse position, and just camel case that. So, and then we can just finally put left click in here, right click, and mouse position. So this is all our player input job is going to do is it gets a left click, right click mouse position and sets it on uh, that component for that entity. So now we need to actually schedule this job and we do that with our on update method. So protected override, um, we want to return a job handle and we have an on update right here. So this it's a job handle input dependencies. So we're actually just going to make bar job equals new player input job. And then we're going to do job dot schedule. And we're going to do this. 
So this won't actually work. Um, we should send in the input depths here, and then we should finally return this job. Uh, so this still doesn't work. We didn't set our left click, right click, and mouse position. So this does run on the main thread. So we can actually just do, well, I will, we'll just put it in here. So we can actually just set that data. So left click equals input dot get mouse button down. That's zero. Then right click, same thing, input dot get mouse button down, but change it to a one for the right click. And then mouse position is just going to be input mouse position. OK, cool. So now we are passing in the correct inputs to the unit, and then we are scheduling it to the job and setting it on that component. Now, the final thing we need to do, because we're making an RTS, is convert this mouse position to world coordinates. Um, so we're going to cheat a little bit, and we're going to use ray casting. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, making your own ray cast or trying to override that won't be good, because once Unity comes out with the ECS version of it, uh, then you're just going to have to throw away all that work. So I think right now it makes sense to just have this nice little snippet for ray casting. So we're going to actually get the mouse position here, input that mouse position, and then we're going to create a ray. So create camera, main, screen to point, screen point to ray. Uh, we're just going to pass in our mouse position. And then we're going to ray cast it. So physics ray cast we're going to send in our array and we're going to ray cast hit hit whoops we want to capture that ray cast so we're actually once we ray cast we're just going to capture the mouse position of wherever they hit so float three and we're going to go hit point x we're going to zero out the y we have no need we have Right now, we're not worried about <clears throat> anything on the height axis, so we're just going to zero that one out and then hit point Z. Great. So this, our Jobified player input system, should be done now. For raycasting, we're getting the world coordinates correctly, and um, we're storing that into our, our entities. Uh, so now the next, um, we'll just quickly test this, actually. So we're going to make a bootstrap uh, component, or sorry, class. And I'm just going to right click C sharp and we're going to just call it RTS bootstrap. Uh, now, I, this is how they do it on the Unity examples with their uh, twin stick shooter example. They make a bootstrap, and this is kind of how you, this is like your entry point into the world and how you create all, all that crazy good stuff. So let's get rid of this. Actually, I'm just going to paste my bootstrap code. Uh, <clears throat> from my sample project, and I'm just going to talk through this. Uh, it, the things I'm doing here are not much different from the twin stick shooter examples, uh, but I'll kind of just quickly run through it just so everyone knows what's going on. Uh, so we have three class variables here. We have the entity arch archetype. Um, this is my player unit that I decided um, I'm going to reuse it, so I might as well just store it. Uh, mesh instance renderer. So you'll have a renderer for each of um, the models you want to render. I'm just rendering a cube. And we store the entity manager, because we'll use it in a couple of stuff. Uh, so the two main methods that you'll need in your bootstrap is initialize and initialize with scene. Um, and they're called before the scene load and after scene load, respectively. And um, as, as and you do need these decorators, um, but they just do a lot of bunch of helper stuff. So. Here is the entity manager, world active get or create manager, and this kind of handles all the entity creation and managing. Um, and I make my player unit archetype. Um, so we just create this archetype because I know I'm going to be using this m multiple times, so it makes sense to just store it. Um, we haven't created our move speed. Um, that was taken out by Unity, and um, our, our, I don't know if it was, I don't know if they, they had it, but we're going to have to make that in the future. But I have a position, rotation, and our player input that we just created. Uh, so going down here, initialize with scene. Um, we just get Luke from prototype. 
and cube prototype. So you'll see in the Unity scene, we'll make a cube prototype. Um, and this just gets the mesh instance renderer component from it. Um, so finds it in the game, get the mesh instance, and return it. Um, and then finally, we just start our RTS game. And um, all I'm doing in here is iterating three times. I create our player unique archetype entity three times. And we set the position, and I just times it by five to give them a little space from each other. And then we add shared component data, um, the cube renderer. And when you add shared component data, that's data that doesn't change too often and can be used across multiple minions or units. So this is generally where the renderer stuff goes. Um, cool. So last two things we should do is the move speed and uh, we'll just see where we're at. Um, so I'm going to go right click create move speed component and this one is actually just going to be pretty simple using unity entities extending from i component data just like component oh, i component oh. <laughs> there we go I component data and we're just going to have a public float speed and this is uh, and then this should work once we oh, whoops get rid of that okay there we go uh, and then the last thing is we need our Q prototype to let unity know how we want our units to look so we're going to right click and we're going to create an empty object game object we're gonna call it cube prototype and the only thing we're gonna add is a mesh instance uh, I'm just gonna type an in instance mesh instance renderer component so in here it's gonna require a mesh and a material so we're just gonna use cube for what we want to do right now and we don't actually have a material so let's just go ahead and create a plain old material we'll call it player unit mat and uh, I guess we'll have our units be yellow and one important thing is we need to enable GPU instancing so we'll click that otherwise it will give you an error so we go in here player unit mat and we're good to go we have our cube prototype now nothing will actually show up in the scene but once we press play we'll see that three cubes show up and they don't <laughs> so we actually forgot to <clears throat> uh, yeah put move speed to be a struct is right now it's a class so remember uh, these I these component data are only data they only contain data so they should not be classes they should not be doing anything on their own and now once we press play it should we should have three cubes show up perfect so three cubes showing up um, we have our player input um, it is working but we have nothing logging in the next video uh, we're going to get into selecting the unit and um, debugging and all that good stuff the code for this and the next video tutorial series will be already on github so feel free to access that peruse through the code thank you for watching hopefully to see you in the next video please like and subscribe and i'll see you soon